Hello guys, welcome back to the Sanexi IGCSE Biology video. So today we are going to go to the chapter 19 which is organisms and their environment. So we're going to understand the energy flow within the food chain and be able to identify different tropic levels. Know how to change one of the tropic levels that can affect other tropic levels. And lastly is to relate energy losses with energy efficiency. Okay, so as we all know, this is the kind of like the food chain, if you know from um, year 9, that produces then primary consumers, secondary consumers, then tertiary consumers. So what is before producers is the sun, because sun is the principal source of energy input to all biological system. So about the first one, which is producers, the autotrops means they make food for themselves which they cut which is 100% of the energy and 10% of the energy is being used for the primary consumer and then 1% of the energy is being used in secondary consumer and the third the last consumer takes up 0.1%. So 90% of the energy loss in energy at each tropic level so that remains 10%. Okay. This is the tropic level so we of course would choose the second tropic level instead of the first one because it shows that there's more trees than birds because there are not many birds in, in this world there's not like 10 million birds but tree there's definitely a lot there are more trees than birds so this makes sense that that the consumers are eating the producer the which the producer has like large amount on earth and then there are some birds just eat onto caterpillars, okay? So what is the advantage of the pyramid of the biomass? It is more accurate, okay? And it represents the dry mass instead of numbers. And lastly, it's almost always pyramid shape, okay? So, yes. This is it. So, before we go into here, so pi primary pyramids of biomass is equals to dry mass times number of organisms. So for prim pyramid of numbers, the producer is usually more than the tertiary consumer. And then the, pi the pyramid of biomass is to show that the producer is, this is the amount of producer over the amount of tertiary. Usually it's always producer more than tertiary consumer. Then we know that herbivores are basically animal that gets energy by eating plants and carnivore is an animal that gets energy by eating other animals and decomposers are energy that get its energy from dead and or waste organic material it means they eat dead items basically. So what are the human impacts of this? It will be over harvesting, it will be introducing foreign species to a habitat and then it removes certain habitats and lastly extinction would occur all right so this is it we all know the food web really well from at this stage and how food chain works so yes we'll move on so the next one is 19.3 which is the nutrient cycle or the first one we enter is the water cycle so water cycle is being learned in in geography so it's nearly the same thing so look at this right now so water cycle is really easy to know because it's the words we know it's already there so the groundwater is absorbed by plant roots and then it and the other trees are transpired by plants okay then the evaporation occurs in streams lakes and the sea from where heat from the sun so there's evaporation occur and now the water vapor is in the air. Then the water vapor transfer to the as water droplets in the clouds as into condensation. When the rain falls, it becomes precipitation. And then the water soaks into the ground again and then goes into the streams and then the whole process repeats again. Okay. So there's a few words that you need to know from here is 
respiration. One another thing is also respiration because water is being released and water vapor from where animals breathe also happens. Evaporation, transpiration, condensation, and precipitation. That's all what you need to know. So the next one is the carbon cycle. So yes, you see, eh, this is also quite similar. Okay, we will separate that into different parts. So first one is respiration. So and also photosynthesis happening. So respiration releases carbon dioxide in the air from it can be animals or even dead organisms they can actually respire and give carbon dioxide but photosynthesis they are absorbing carbon dioxide to make something new which is glucose all right so animals are also counted as carbon compounds and then the cow's urine and feces becomes a decomposer then the decomposer eats up dead materials and then they continue to survive that's where the respiration occurs and make carbon dioxide being released into the air for the next part is what you call as fossilization or and then onto combustion means you are basically um burning fossil fuels that of course releases carbon dioxide in the air so burning is equal to combustion so burning fossil fuel is carbon dioxide being released and deforestation increases carbon dioxide because trees are carbon sinks okay and they store carbon also okay so yes this is the carbon cycle next one is the nitrogen cycle the nitrogen cycle is a bit more a bit confusing for some people so we will start with the animation so the animation occurs from all living um living animals because they have to excrete out okay so therefore once the animation occurs you release ammonia into the ground so what's after that mm. it decompose and it starts to nitrificate into nitrate ions and then the nitrates and am ammonia in the soil can produce proteins for the plants to grow remember that in plant nutrition they require nitrate ions to grow for plants so yes this is where your nitrate comes from so another thing is fertilizers fertilizers they are also mostly nitrate ion that's why it helps to grow faster okay after that nitrogen fixation occur it's where energy from the lightning makes nitrogen combined with oxygen to form nitrogen oxide that dissolve in rainwater and is washed into the soil to form nitrate ions so that is the nitrogen fixation it comes from lightning then we have the so we talk about the underground ready and then we have the first one which is the nitrogen fixing inside the back in bacteria in root modules which it changes nitrogen gas into ammonia to form legumes plants to make amino acids protein remember protein break down amino acids so Yes, this is one of it. Another one is the nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil, which it converts nitrogen gas into ammonia, which mixes with water to form ammonium ions. Okay, so yes, this is how it works. If they ask you how does the protein enter to the plant, it's by active transport. So that's why it links back to your diffusion, osmosis, and active transport so this is how you link everything so the things that you have to know the key points in in nutrient cycle in this nutrient cycle is that decomposition of plant and animal protein to ammonium ions and nitrification occurs then nitrogen fixation by lightning and bacteria causes the nitrogen gas to combine with o2 to form nitrogen oxide 
then the absorption of nitrate ion by plants, the production of amino acids and protein, the feeding and digestion of protein, deamination and denitrification. So this is what you need to know. All right. So as usual, nitrogen fixation for one is from lightning, which is nitrogen gas combined with oxygen to form nitrogen oxide, and then it dissolves to form nitrates. Then we got artificial fertilizers, which is nitrogen and hydrogen react as a Haber process, which you will learn this in chemistry to form ammonia. Then nitrogen fixing bacteria is that it lives in soil or root nodules using nitrogen gas to convert into ammonium ions. Then once nitrogen has been fixed, used to make protein, animals obtain protein in the form of nitrogen. So yeah, this is technically everything linked together well. And then decomposition bacteria and fungi will decompose dead organism or waste organic matter. Then protein is break, broken down into ammonium ions which is converted by nitrifying bacteria into nitrates. Then it will be reused again back into plants. So denitrifying bacteria turns nitrate into ammonia in the soil into nitrogen gas. Then it leaves the atmosphere. Does this make sense now to the nutrients to the nitrogen cycle? Alright. Next one, 19.4, which is the population size. So popul similar to in geography also, so population is a group of organisms of one species living in the same area and the same time. Then community is all of the population of different species in an ecosystem. Then an ecosystem is a unit containing the community of organisms and their environment all interacting together in the same time. So factors that affect rate of population growth is that we have food supply. So if there's no food supply, then of course your population will extinct. And then predation, more predators, lower population growth because you're eating other things. And then disease, once there are many disease, it can affect the population and it will decrease. So environmental impacts would be like clearing of natural habitats, which definitely de decrease the biodiversity. It increases the consumption of fossil fuels, which global warming will occur. And more water is being used over fishing invasive foreign species. Okay. Then this is the... Um, the sigmoid curve of the population growth showing the environmental with limited resources. So first one is the lag phase which few organisms are reproducing or no increase in number of living. Then we have the exponential phase or the log phase which is the population increase rapidly with no limiting factors. Then stationary phase would be death rate equals to birth rate with limiting factors being present. Then death phase is where the death rate is more than the birth rate due to the lack of food and etc. So limiting factors stop the population increasing. Can be competition, can be predators and can be the spread of diseases. All right. So this is the age pyramid. I don't, you don't really need to know this that much, but you must know how it works that um, the amount of population, amount of age groups in percentage, how many are there? So like basically if there are um, 4% of the 65 to 69 age people living, this is how they represent it. So that is all for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.